need to write my mother like back you. in the home and come to You don't gotta ride that trail again. You lonely, mister. Williamson and his gang just ain't gonna stop. Quick, you will, Wayne. That's it, come on. I'm gonna dance all over your behind. Hey. Hey, handsome. How you been? Why don't you jump up? I can go a little faster. Where to, sir? Give me the McFarland's red. I don't know if that guy is Follow Charlie. He's a good one to snip out trouble. Stay close to Charlie. Close, 
Next time you're a dead man, you hear? What you waiting for? Take a swat. That's a nice healthy stride you have, sir. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson to settle here and build a life for yourself. Uh, I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is I had two and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that, I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh. Call me Bonnie, you fool. <sighs> Call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland, I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true, especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her, well, I, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man in a way. But you killed people. 
Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left. I tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that. Control that horse, thank you. will you?
might be your true calling, Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Well, hello, Mr. Marston. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. Then we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, and terrible winters, cholera. I very more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. I've had whole herds of cattle just take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace, and men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's well, see if we can't here. wrangle some horses.
sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches and steal a coin off a dead man's eye. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy but the I know ride? we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there are few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland.
It's all right. I like your father. I'm glad. He's quite a character. You have a good life here. A life I want. For me and my family, I mean. We don't have a lot anymore. You have enough. It's one that gets... Well done, Mr. Marston. These are fine horses. Hey, Bonnie. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. Never married. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure ask a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a cat. Come on. In many ways, my wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland.
magnificent animals they are. Hey, sell your kids away! Chase them down and bring them back. Come on! Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal.
Let's go. Hey, miss, I got most of the horses secure and the chickens. Well, thank you, Amos, but it's the herd I'm worried about. I know, they're scattered all over the valley and beyond. The weather is coming in real fast. So what do you suggest, Amos? We leave the herd out there to be scattered by the storm and ourselves left here to die without a livelihood? Can I help? No, miss. If the men get caught out in that storm, they're gonna die. And if we lose our herd, we'll all die, you stupid man. Doesn't sound like we're left with much of a choice then. Come on, Amos. Round up your men. Let's get the herd. Dang.
operation in different pastures. We'll need to merge them and bring them all back. I think we can handle that. The cows get real ornery in bad weather. It's more work, but I'll show you how to deal with them. It's gonna be difficult to talk in this weather. Stay close. We don't want to lose each other. Come on. Do something! They're heading for the cliff! 
You might make a decent rancher one day. Thank you, Miss McFarland. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You need help? Mister, you alive? Fuck, fuck. God damn it. Good heavens. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. St. Peter, open up them pearly gates. I'm coming home. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. Hurry, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. Oh, I'm finished. 
finished! Done for! Just sit up straight, will you? To Armadillo! Godspeed! What is your name, friend? John Marston. Oh, good God! Out of the frying pan into the fire! Excuse me! How many outlaws can a man encounter in one day? You must have me mistaken with somebody else, friend. The Pollard twins! Walton's gang! I know who you are! Word sure travels fast around here. I'm a man with many connections. Spare my life, I beg of you. Good Lord! It's those scoundrels once again! is in Armadillo! For the love of God, stick to the road! What the hell happened to you? Bandits, hoodlums, the scoundrels robbed me blind and left me to die! I can see that. Once again, I'm the victim of my own success. They seem to a man in a wilted suit and this happens. They're back! I'm done for! This 
is bad. Looks like you got them all. Now get me to a doctor. I trust you won't be offended if I don't talk. Speed! It's going to be difficult for me to talk. I can hardly breathe. Where the devil are we? Armadillo. We made it safe, you'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but 
I appreciate the civility. I owe you, sir. And I always pay my debts. Oh, Jesus! But if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for... for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man for. Ah, since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? We've had this problem for months with this group of bandits who are getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. Women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway. We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. Hey, wait up! who claims to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East, the result of years of research. If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. Times is changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. But people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that West Dickens. Hey, Marshal, see those vultures? We should check it out. Marston, Eli, go see what it is. Let's go. Ah. Ain't no survivors here, Marshal. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. Come on! Let's stay on this road. Maybe the folks at Ridgewood Farm saw something. What kind of man does that? A bunch of weak men. I think it's this land that makes the men, as much as the other way around. Men are born, and then they're formed. At least that's how I see it. Who could have done such a thing? Any number of people. Especially now the word's out we're cleaning up the county. Between Walton's boys and the rustlers, we've been spilling a lot of blood. I can see more boats up ahead. We best take a look, boys. Let's ride! 
I kinda got too far. Sounds of bitches! Come on! Nobody's in the shed! like this. Break that door now. The rest of you, get your guns ready. Holy sweet mother of mercy. Apologies, mister.
Ain't you a pretty little thing? I'm gonna enjoy this! You're gonna be all right. Head for the shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. Come on, you coward! As soon as you can, make a run for the shed. And keep your head down. They did unspeakable things to me. Looks like that's all of them. Let's see how the hostages are doing. My God. Chasing him down like wild dogs. I thought you were supposed to protect us, Marshal. You folk eat men. You ain't nothing. You're just a man on a government payroll taking money that the rest of us have to pay for with our lives. What is wrong with this country? Not up, men. The man that kills the boss of that bunch gets $50. It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives, people's homes. <laughs> Come on, they're gonna get away! All right, let's find those bastards. Come on! What do you think of Wayne's anyway, Martin? Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell are you talking about? Some people I... Time ago. And bearing in mind, he's left me for dead the last two times I've seen him. I'm about figuring we've moved past the family part. Yeah! Guys up! You see that? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now! Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed!
should have run away. Hey, look what I got here. <laughs> There's something that you're still breathing. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> Come on, Bessie. Give. <laughs> oh. Norman Deke. <laughs> Fuck. Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is going to help us get to Bill. Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Deke. Mighty kind. Fuck you! Hog time. Let's get him to jail.
Marston, have you seen my father anywhere? No. He went out this morning to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. I don't know. The ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they've found nothing. Well, come on. Let's go look for him. Let's head out. He couldn't have gotten far. Just fine, Miss McFarland. You built like an oak. You're probably right, but I can't help worrying. He's all I've got. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers, but five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the east and never came back. Let's be getting on for ten years ago yeah. now. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe they're Baller twins, that bunch. Now you head back to the ranch right now. Fetch your wagon. Yes, sir. Marston, you watch after her. I'll do that, sir. It's a bad idea to split up right now. Come on. Yeah. What could have happened to those poor men? And their horses were dead too. I think Wake we should get back can. there as soon as we can. Just do what he says and get the wagon. Those damn rustlers! I've got a good mind to head over to Pike's Basin myself. I don't think that's a good idea. And you're no better. How many men have you killed? Do you really want to know? It's disgusting. You never met the men I killed. I heard the way you talk about that gang you were in. Like there was some twisted more... Oh my god! The barn's on fire!
sure know how to handle yourself. Thanks, Marston. Yes, John, thanks. You, well, you saved the ranch. If you'll excuse me, I, I've got chores to attend to. Hey, w w hold on a second over there. Sincerely, John. Thank you. Well, did all I could, Miss McFarland. Sorry about all the damage. That gang seems to really want you out of here. Yeah, well, my father fought Indians. I scarcely think we're going to be frightened by some white trash. White trash can be pretty frightening. Well, they don't frighten me. Good. John, my family owes you a great debt. I think you got enough debt. You saved my life. All I ask of you is this. If I get back home and get my farm started back up, you'll sell me some cattle. I prefer doing business with people I know. Of course, Mr. Marston. It'd be my pleasure. Um, well, you get some rest. I've got to go see how my father's bearing up. I'm aboard. Don't take all day. Where is it you're headed, mister? Take me to Armadillo. You just rest up a spell, mister. I'm the best coachman in these here parts. I need a rest. I don't have a clue. All right, but it's got to be something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him, find out what he knows. Fucking is. Where is she, Marston? <laughs> Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum. Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? Because she hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child... Now, Drew, <laughs> nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Who the hell's that? Hey, buddy! <laughs> that be your next fucking mayor. Even better! Good day, Mr. McFarland. Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. Not if Drew McFarland wants to see his bunny back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarland! This is a nice girl you got there. <laughs> Get down from there! You know... Part of me's got to thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby and that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you'll get your daughter back, mister. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do. Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Whole government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back. 
before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas, or I will slit that horse throat myself! You boys have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah! What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. I owe her that. Please do. That time I... Did I forget to turn my mic off? Um... I did. I've been crapping all the time, haven't I? Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Um, jeez. Quick as you can. Are you? Make sure he's tied on good. Stay with me, boy. Uh, if I turn on, you, probably dead on the freaking narrow. Right. Let's go get Miss McFarland back. Let's go. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Sorry. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is... They're probably didn't say anything. I said it's play from here. earlier. They gave me no choice. They didn't reason to let my cast is usually cat, usually time cast. Because... My sleep got screwed up this morning because... Uh, the fact they had nothing to do with me because the power went out because the super squirrel got into something backed up the power of the house. So we had no power for somewhere else. And it took me only an hour to go back to sleep after sleeping for like maybe 30 minutes. I think it more than maybe 5 hours. Well, I was exhausted this morning. I could barely keep my eyes open. What is this place we're headed? Oh yeah, we usually do this only, only late night, like Thursdays and Sundays. What? Might do it more often, just, just, just uh, take days off, especially if days like during the Halloween time, they're getting into... Might. We'll see. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarland, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I could have. I'm taking advantage. Bed. You're actually helping them. Been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable. Different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. I know you helped. Just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and the past. And I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubt. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business neither. How is this mess supposed to turn out? Depending on an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules, but they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyway, just to spite me. If I punish him, he resents me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, at least he has reason not to do it That's again. That's not there. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. Then look at Zeke here. Man has worked hard at civilization. Your boy steps out of line, you whack him. If he does it again, whack him harder. You're a good man, Marshal, and I respect what you're trying to do. Behind, um, what I've seen since I've arrived here, the law ain't really working. Criminals are like weed, Marston. Weeks you stomp one out, another one sprouts up in its place. It's the nature of place. You know that as well as I do. The problem with laws is everybody ain't the same. Why should a bunch of rich university oh, I am somebody who's okay with how a man Becky. should live his yeah. life. Well, maybe you're right about that. Becky, is that actually totally legal? Where are you from, Marston? As long as you don't Lots do it, it's in a fish. I've up on a little farm in West Elizabeth for the past so where away, like with a weapon or something. I'm not for punching or beating shit out of you, kid. The guy here. Yeah. Go. That's that's wrong. Stop burning so hard, you son of a bitch! Come on, boys, over the bridge. Come on. Let's go. I don't. 
Charlie. John. Well, all right. You'll be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. You bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. John, you lead Deke into town. Make the exchange. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. I hear those rancher girls like it in the rear. Maybe she won't want to go home. She been fucked so good. Why don't you save some of that breath from breathing? Get these ropes off me, boys! Where's Bonnie? I thought we had a deal. Well, you thought wrong. We don't make deals with the law. I am in a place where I am. A lot more health than that, Jake. Come on. Where's Bonnie? I thought we had a deal. Well, I ain't had a trap. You can shoot him. So Bonnie, how did I so? What the fuck? What the fuck are you smoking? Bonnie? I, I shot the rope. You're gonna be fine, 
Okay. I'm fine now, Mr. Marston. It looks like you bad days. Thank you. What the hell took you so long? Looks like she'll live. Well, you weren't exactly helping me. If you think I'm gonna lower myself by making a joke about being all tied up, you got another thing coming. Come on. <coughs> Tumbleweed for tumbleweed. I 
gonna check out this movie. I just want to leave do one last mission. Right, grab the foot. Good night. I'll be back to you in a second. Thanks a lot. Absolutely crave for the game. So, as those boys are. Black and white. false testimony except for, for profit. And I can tell you with no uncertainty that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you <laughs> good day, sir. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? 
I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service. At the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be. I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir, I'd do a bulk discount rate of $1.95 an ounce. <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more, that's a lot of immortality. Ah, uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... Listen, Marston, I'm broke, but this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along. Let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. Okay. <laughs> to Ridgewood Farm, the sick and needy await us. Oh, the life of a wandering saver of souls. And I about you, John Marston. Good week in the week, gullible out of their hard-earned money. My dear boy, you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill-informed scuttle. You're as full of wind as a horse with the collar. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands of happy customers attest to that. Those men trying to kill you didn't look so happy. Skepticism is the bastard child of progress, John. Stay on the road! You're going to destroy the merchandise! Knowledge makes a fool into a doubting Thomas. God damn it. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine fettle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at Beth's door. You should thank the doctor for that. And I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing Othello there has never been. And so shall we be fair. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Showmanship, John. The flourish. The bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret this. I'll drop this. you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the crowd and will sure be fun. Eventually, I will call you up to try my tonic. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the king. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. Best you alight here, dear boy, so no one sees us arriving together. See you shortly, and remember, showmanship! I guess I'm well. Should be interesting. Remember what well, uh, you got there? Hard 
Searching souls of Chola Springs, gather round, gather round. Do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, backache, swelling, sprains, sore chests, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> but can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some well, we're hoping right prove it. who could prove the qualities of it by taking a drink right now. You, sir, come up here. Step right up. Well, uh, let's see. She's That's using us. Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple. That was some good shit. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today science will be vindicated. Your eyesight is greatly improved, is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. The eyesight of an eagle, granted by Imperial Dr. Westicken's own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eyes are so damn sharp, why don't you try shooting my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Here it comes. <laughs> see? That tonic is a sham. Ah, Alec. Do not write him off yet. He is still adjusting to the power. Right then. Here comes the throw. Not the Behold the power of the <laughs> I probably come up the first time. Hey, hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? Dude, has to shoot the thing. Come on! Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteer. Prepare for a display of Herculean brawn. Just look at the strength the tonic is afforded him. There it is, skeptics and dissenters, irrefutable proof. Do not let this opportunity pass you by. Look, he's over there. Go get him. This ends now. Watch out, he's got a gun. Cease. Who the hell do you think you are? You ain't leaving here alive. What? What's that supposed to do? Oh, I'm the shit of it. Got it, I think. 
mercy that can only be afforded by the West Dickens elixir. Come, I have plenty for all. You'll be fine. Get out of my way. Hey, where are you going? Oh, I, I want a bottle. Get me a bottle. Of water. One of them will ride you. Well, no harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Well, I think that went kind of well, don't you? I'm just glad that my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks burying gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. Uh, he's uh, most often found at Coote's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! Uh. How can I refuse? Let's play some poker. There's other things.
this is that bolt. I would definitely up. Straight draw. Missed. You missed him too. Ah. Dimes on the board. No, sir. Flush draw. I'm looking a little Pair of aces. Hello, sir. Check. Back kicker. Oh no. We got a wild one. Hmm. I got aces. <laughs> I'm gonna drop my lasso around, Lady Luck. Reel her in. Flip. Good call. It's me full house. It makes me think I have, yeah, straight draw. Ten nine. I guess a small bit. Nope, he was bluffing. Fault. I can have to call. Call the Ooh, straight, I'm a straight. Hmm. I'm gonna check and see what he does. Just checks.
a second straight draw. I got, I also got a flush straight draw. I got flush alright, or straight alright, but. Yeah, that's the. That's the flush, straight flush draw, but still got the straight. Call gets in on every deck. Seventh. Oh, he is bluffing. Oof. Let's draw. But not what I needed. On the up. That misses me completely. Check. We got ourselves a tough guy. <laughs> Think I'm gonna call. Ooh, gives me two pair. Use that last hand. Time to smoke out the foam. I forget he was going to have anything. That's the thing in there. Ten seven. I read that one. <laughs> You'll have bets before the pot is trying to. Straight draw. This is <laughs> what the hell is is he doing? Straight draw.
Let's open an Estratra. Six of Jack will come out. I have strength. And it's straight draw. It's straight. I know it. I got this guy. Tell me, he's tell me he's bluffing. King of a weak kicker. I guess we two pair. And I wouldn't have. I'm bluffing. Alright, I'm blind. Check. See, this is a crappy hand. Uh, Bold, you gonna have it? Call you. I said seven two is the worst hand of poker. The Southwestern Railroad Company is just a front for the Jews to run the country, you know. Is just above, just a step above it. I check. Hey. That's more like it. No, I'm out. Girls, all yours. As it is the last to end. Yeah. 
Ace is sitting hands. Straight to us. I'm gonna call it. I'm looking a little hog tied. No thanks. I'm done. Hello. Brusco. Hello, sir. Hmm. Sure could have used that last hand. Okay. I'll place a bet. I'm gonna call. I'm looking a little hog tied. That's enough for me.
seven for straight draw. Get buffing. Uh -huh. If he's buffed a lot, or just if I, I have more, way more chips than him. Think I'll check. Catch him on bluff, but the problem is, don't want to look back into it. I see you want to play. I'll call. I'll sweeten that pot. Uh, fold. Time to get down to brass tacks. Yes, I do. Yes, you had a proper mustard after all. That was fun, gentlemen. You can buy a few chips if you That's like. That's fine, man. You know, John's is elected governor. He's going to open the rail line for us. The Derby is going to be next week. I must be going. Doc Johnson is going to survive. Good day. Make that piano's attitude. That's fine, because we're just saying stuff, and don't worry. That's Gary for the night. Thanks for making a progress. Because many missions I want it done, so. Yeah! That is Gary for the night. We're actually going to be back tomorrow. With day three of uh, Red Dead Redemption. That'll be tomorrow. Wednesday, only on Wednesday. It's the LB Show 18. Thursday, my work at Eat Deluxe. Racing. Get to go in the morning of day four of Red Dead Redemption on Thursday night. Friday will be day five Red Dead Redemption. Day six sat on Saturday. Sunday will be WDK 18 in the afternoon. My market eat the Lux racing at 8 a.m. on Sunday night. And right back at next Monday, probably wrap, hopefully wrapping up uh, Red Dead Redemption. So yeah, that's the upcoming schedule that for next week. The channel likes to stay up We got lots of games coming up. So like I said, uh, we're gonna be continuing uh, Red Dead Redemption, and then we got coming up uh, and uh, play at the end of the month uh, afterwards. Um, 
Kingdom Hearts Breath by Sleep uh, in September. She has Tomb Raider. October to Halloween. I thought we'll be doing uh, The Undead Nightmare then. So, yeah, save the zombie DLC for the Halloween. <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're doing that in October. Uh, and, uh, among other things, November, Marvel Spider Man and Dream Drop Distance. And December, Sash Great Odyssey. And lots more other stuff planned. The whole schedule for the rest of the 20 for this year, and plus more of the scheduled games for next year. You found the schedule up above, uh, above or down below. So, yeah. So, follow me at those. I didn't even type. Alright, that's why. It's good to hell up. Follow me at those. I mean, say when I go live, and I'll go live for the dream sharing. All guys, guys, from across Facebook, Twitter. YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, subscribe to me to pay for all the places past and future, including every playthrough play we've done this year from Assassin's Creed to both Kingdom Hearts and lots more, including box reviews, reaction reviews, convention reviews, all kinds of good stuff can be found there. And if you want to help the cast out, here's some ways in the world to save you money. Yeah. I was glad they, I got as far as I wanted to today, I mean, and it's this, well, get eight done, eight missions on the day, it'd be fine. And, uh, uh, you know, for the regular days, and then, like, the days we have a little bit longer, we go, get a couple more in, I mean, it'll be fine. You know, for, like, Thursday and, or Saturday, it'll be fine. And, yeah. So, till next time, I'm going with everyone.